The US economy is currently booming, with economic growth of over 3%, record employment figures, and inflation finally falling close to the target of 2%. It has been labelled the Goldilocks economy, everything is appearing to go well. But last year there was no shortage of forecasts predicting the imminent demise of the US economy. High inflation and the Fed's sharp increase in interest rates seemed a perfect storm for creating a recession. Larry Summers argued that to bring inflation down would require a couple of years with unemployment at 7%. But come November, will this low inflationary growth be maintained? Or will the long predicted US recession finally arrive? There are at least six factors which put the US at risk of a downturn. But first, why has the US economy done perhaps better than some forecast? In 2022, the US economy was a hit by unexpectedly high inflation, COVID disruptions, higher oil prices, and a post-pandemic surge in demand fueled by printing money and loose fiscal policy. But in 2023, we saw a sharp drop in oil prices and COVID disruptions eased. The result was an almost effortless reduction in inflation. Costs fell and household finances finally started to improve. Now, usually an increase in interest rates from 2 to 5% would be expected to make households much worse off and precipitate a recession. But since the credit crunch, many American households have a 30-year mortgage, so many households have been insulated from the actual increase in interest rates. Now, it's caused a stagnant housing market with people not able to move, kind of trapped in their house to keep their original mortgage deal. But it has meant that we haven't had the same squeeze that we usually would have had. The second big strength behind the US economy is that whilst monetary policy has been tightened, government fiscal policy has been very ambitious. There's been a big economic stimulus, higher borrowing, increased investment, and the ambitious Inflation Reduction Act which ironically is more about giving green subsidies to firms. And this has stimulated a surge in manufacturing investment as firms take advantage of government subsidies. It's provided a boost to employment and an economic stimulus. The consequence is a worrying increase in government borrowing and a rise in the budget deficit, which is one reason to be concerned about the sustainability. We'll get to that later. Now, the rise in borrowing could actually have been worse if Medicare costs hadn't increased as much as expected, partly due to falling US life expectancy. But anyway, finally, US consumer confidence is starting to improve. In early 2023, US consumers were somewhat reluctant to believe inflation finally coming down. Despite theoretically good data, consumers were still pessimistic. There's a few reasons for this. Firstly, consumers were still adjusting to a 25% increase in the price level. Inflation may come down, but as I, when I was in America, I noticed how expensive things have got. Another reason for low reported confidence is the extreme partisanship. For example, Republican voters have a very negative view of the economy with a Democratic president. And even with inflation continuing to fall, the outlook still remains negative. The good news is that inflation trends are even better than 12 months ago. The outlook for inflation is pretty good for the next 12 months, and it even gives the Fed scope for cutting interest rates later in the year. Now, this paints a fairly optimistic picture, but there are at least six warning signals that indicate the economy may not be quite as rosy as it appears at the moment. Firstly, the US economy is something of a two-speed economy. Despite strong economic growth, low-income households are still struggling with real wages only marginally higher than pre-pandemic. The cost of living still bites with 61% of Americans reportedly living from paycheck to paycheck. For example, just this year, for example, in America, car insurance has soared 37% since January 2020. Secondly, American households have been surviving the cost of living crisis by running down savings. The US saving rate has fallen to 3.7%, one of the lowest rates in the post-war period. What it means is there's little room for manoeuvre left. Thirdly, the large rise in interest rates is still to be felt in the economy. Interest rates have a time lag, and in 2024 we'll increasingly see the impact of higher interest rates on both business and consumers. US house prices are significantly overvalued. 
with price to incomes near record levels. Higher mortgage rates in theory should bring prices back down. And although there's been a delay, some feel prices could start to fall this year. If house prices did fall, it would have a big negative wealth effect and fall in consumer spending. Fourthly, the lessons of the 2022 inflation shock should not be forgotten so quickly. All it takes is for another geopolitical shock to cause a rise in oil prices. Saudi Arabia is really wanting to increase oil prices. It's only weak Chinese and European demand that's keeping oil prices low. The turmoil in the Middle East could easily spark another increase in oil prices and the return of a devastating cost push inflation shock. Fifthly, the American economy has become increasingly reliant on expansionary fiscal policy and higher government spending and higher government borrowing. But this is unsustainable in the long term. From a Keynesian perspective, the period of high growth should be a time to reduce debt, not increase the budget deficit. Federal borrowing is now 6% of GDP and Fitch report that total US government borrowing is around 9% of GDP. That's both local and federal borrowing. And this borrowing has been worsened by higher interest rates and higher debt interest payments. Partisan brinkmanship also leaves a scope for a government shutdown, which would lead to a catastrophic uh, reduction in demand, and that would really hit the economy hard. The only good news is that strong growth is at least starting to improve tax revenues. Sixthly, the US economy is really leaving behind European uh, economies. Whilst the US does well, European economies are really stagnating. China also faces a real property crisis and very weak economic growth by its standards. And added to all the geopolitical uncertainty, low global growth will hurt the US economy throughout the coming year. What do experts predict about the coming year? And the stakes couldn't be higher. Should the economy be doing well, it would definitely favour the incumbent president. But should we see a recession or a return to inflation, it could be fatal for the chances of the incumbent president. JP Morgan predict economic growth of only 0.7%. St. Louis Fed report a survey of professional forecasters predict economic growth slightly better at 1.8% by the fourth quarter of 2024. But they do say inflation should continue to fall throughout this year. There might be a slight uptick in employment, but still fairly close to full employment. Now, that forecast was made in November 2023, and already growth in the last quarter was better than expected. Forecasting has been a difficult job in recent years, and don't forget how many people predicted a recession in 2023, which really failed to materialise completely. The good news is that economies have a certain momentum effect. The past growth will continue to boost investment and spending throughout the year. However, there's now limited scope for economic growth given the um, very low savings ratio and more interest rates to affect the economy. In the absence of any inflation shock, we should see inflation remain below by the end of the year. And people will also have more adjusted to the increase in the price level during COVID. So that's going to be good news. The outlook for economic growth is not too bad. It would take quite a big shock for the economy to turn by November. So going into the election in November, the economy in the US is going to be relatively good. It certainly could be a lot worse. The timing, uh, for at least from President Biden's perspective, is relatively good. The worst of the inflation is over. And it's too early to see a recession happening within the next six months. Now, the outlook after, his, uh, after the election of November 2024 is a bit different. There's still a lot of these negative factors that could weigh on the economy and cause that momentum to slow down and quite possibly go into reverse uh, later in the year or into 2025. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and do check this one out about the German economy because we're looking at the difference between Europe and the US and Germany is going into recession really for the opposite reason to America. Whereas America is having an expansion in fiscal policy, Germany is going for austerity. And you can see how that's really affecting the economy in a negative way. And don't forget to subscribe, it's going to be a great channel.